Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing out there? This is the Woodhounds. We are a podcast of firewood and everything firewood fun and firewood fun. And <laughs> and we are not only just a podcast on firewood, we are the number one firewood podcast in the world. Yeah. Yeah, that never gets old no, saying that. I love no. saying that. But yes, welcome yeah. back, everyone. Glad you're tuning in for another episode of The Woodhounds here, the podcast where you can come and get your weekly dose of Joe from Ohio Woodburner and me from Back 40. Dan, Shifty, <laughs> Back 40, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yep, yeah, we got our start as YouTube channels, and we've uh, just looked to... Uh, find a uh a different way of getting our getting our passion our interests uh our discussions out there so we thought we would try the podcast universe another way and i like it yeah another way to have some fun with firewood i'm i'm loving it too yeah did you ever think that you would have a podcast about firewood no i never thought that anyone would want to listen to anything or watch anything about firewood, <laughs> but yeah, YouTube. Well, someone my is, mind. yeah, someone is listening because you uh, have this magical device called a dashboard. Yes, and it, it and it tracks downloads. And uh, there's been what one, two. There's been a few. There's, there's people been a out few there that are interested. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So far, so good. I like it. I, yes. What I like about it is. This time of year, you know, mid February, <laughs> I am I am inside, in in the warmth of my uh, of my uh, studio here. The so. comforts of the Woodhound Studio, yes. Yeah, the yeah, I'm inside here at the the Woodhound Studios, and I'm sitting across the table from my good friend Dan. Yes, <clears throat> always yeah. great to see your smiling, bright eyed, bushy tailed face, Joe. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. But I was thinking, Dan, um, you know, it's cold out and the, one of the nice things about firewood is that sometimes this is the best time of year to make firewood because we all know the heat of the summer, uh, that's, that's a challenge. Yes. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you also don't want to have like negative 20 and wind chill and frostbite and stuff. But I mean, when it, the ground's frozen, uh, and there's a, you know, there's a definite bite in the air. I think that might be one of the best times to make firewood because everyone knows that if if you're going to have good firewood, it's got to be split. Do you agree? Yes, I do agree. Yeah. And I don't know. Have you, you know, when you split firewood, well, let me ask you this. Have you ever split firewood with, with a maul or an axe? Yes, I have. Not, uh by choice but i have <laughs> <laughs> i think there's probably not a person out there who is passionate about firewood or has an interest in it that hasn't split it you know with an axe or a maul or a wedge and a sledgehammer do you agree yes yeah and i can speak from experience i love splitting firewood by hand for about five minutes <laughs> yep. and then i and then i don't feel like doing it anymore is <laughs> but this would be if i did i would be out there right now doing it because this is the kind of weather where where you want to do it yes you get a good uh you get your heart rate up you work your muscles you're generating some body heat and if you want to have a long session with a mall now's the time right get on out there and do it yeah well and the other thing too is I think just traditionally this time of year, there's nothing else really to do. So, you know, for me growing up in the winter, there wasn't any farming to do. There wasn't anything to do for chores as far as uh, maintaining the farm and firewood is something we needed every year. And this was the time of year to do it. And what I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make an assumption that everyone out there knows what we're talking about when we talk about a mall. And that was my first experience with splitting firewood. I remember being young. I couldn't even pick that thing up. And it was a fascinating 
device because when you think of wood and chopping wood you think of an axe and i still remember when i first saw my first maul you know a maul has a long handle on it like an axe but the the working end is just this big chunk of metal that looks yep. like a <laughs> big chunky wedge and of course it was too heavy for me to pick up and it was just fascinating to watch because you know you hit the right piece of wood with it and man it just explodes into pieces uh, what a great device i wonder when i wonder when one of those was invented whenever i watch you know a tv show or a movie and it's from the old western you know with horses and cowboys and all they're always cutting wood with an axe <laughs> <laughs> i've yep. never i never seen them swinging a mall and i'm just wondering i wonder when the mall was invented i don't know as soon as people started using something other than pine oak or maple and they got into the elm <laughs> or harder <laughs> woods that they could not split with an axe because yeah could you imagine you know growing up in the old west you know before gasoline engines you know when everything was done by hand how you think that like the new guy at the shop <laughs> they play they would play tricks on them you know they're all splitting wood for sale or for, <laughs> for the winter time and then everyone's splitting ash and it's just going great and then they give the new guy all the elm and they don't explain it to him yep yep <laughs> and they just watch him swing away and and bury about five or six wedges into the into the piece you know <laughs> yeah that's what um when you think about log splitting too i think you know that's you probably hit on it, it uh, like the species or maybe even the part of the the country that you come from yep probably played a large role with that yeah you know if if you were out west with a lot of softwoods versus you know in my part of the world um there is a swath of land that goes from like um pennsylvania new york ohio indiana michigan wisconsin minnesota it's called the beach maple belt google that sometime mm. And it was the predominant tree, uh, trees in this area. And it was because they both grew together. Um, they liked each other. They had those big, broad leaves, and they would just choke out the forest floor and wouldn't let anything else grow. So this area was just mostly beech and maple trees. And I know from experience, you know, maple splits pretty easy. Yep. Uh, beet beach is kind of tough you know it's it's not a, a a stringy wood like elm but it's hard to split just makes me wonder if that's when <laughs> western expansion you know when people started moving out this way and heading towards the mississippi if that's when the mall yeah. was invented <laughs> well the other thing that that's crazy that i always think about is how in my area like oak is one of the better firewoods and ironically enough also the easiest splitting so it's almost like, you know, how the universe came together here. It's like, here's a great firewood. It's easy to split and it burns great. You know, it's as opposed to yeah. like the best firewood would be the hardest to split or something like that. It's, it's kind of crazy yeah. how that worked out. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, that's an interesting topic too about, you know, is the hardest. I, I, I'm just sitting here. I'm thinking the easiest splitting woods in my, what I'm thinking of right now are usually the better hardwoods. You know? Yep. Um, like elm is a good firewood, but it's not the greatest. Sycamore, you know, it's not the greatest and it's tough to split. Gum, same thing, but maybe yep. ash, maple, oak. They split right. pretty easy. Yeah. But if if expansion like out into the you know, the Midwest from you know when pre pretty much like all of the united states was the 13 colonies and then when they started expanding out through ohio and towards the mississippi uh if that's when you know new type of splitting tools were invented i do know what <laughs> invented the hydraulic splitter industry <laughs> and and what what is that <laughs> <laughs> as called dutch elm disease <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but that was a joke I heard one time, so I'm going to stick with it. That Dutch elm disease invented the hydraulic splitter. That industry. would make a lot of sense, <laughs> <laughs> because you know elm really doesn't even split on a hydraulic splitter. It's like it oh. gets ripped into two pieces. 
Yeah, it's it's one of I've had pieces of well, it's interesting because if it's freshly like if it's fresh, I find if it's green, it splits easier than if it's been dead and kind of like hardens up and just you know dries out, then it can really mm-hmm. be really be a challenge. Yeah, I don't I've never seen I've had all kinds of experience with it and I've never found any condition where it splits easy. <laughs> instead of uh, except for n- just not even splitting it <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the easiest way just not even just yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. but when i think of hydraulic splitters though i'm wondering if everyone else is like me when you first think of a hydraulic splitter i think of just a simple i-beam splitter on two wheels and a little gasoline engine on it yep. that you can buy at home depot or or Lowe's, and it costs about fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, and the the it splits wood great, but the trick is staying awake while it's while it's splitting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I growing up we had you know we you just think of the log splitter. You have a log splitter, and it's just exactly what you described. Um, mm-hmm. I think the brand was Yardworks or something. Yard, I don't know, but it was just yeah. 25 ton I beam on with a little axle and like you said, small engine and slow. the knife is on the Ram, right? Yes. The, the, yeah. the Ram coming out had the knife on it and you know, the cycle time was 15 seconds. Maybe if you were lucky, uh, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm bad mouthing them, but I mean to each their own for a person who uses it, you know, for a few cords a year, I think it's ideal because oh, they're inexpensive. Absolutely. They're going to last forever. They don't take up that much space in your shed when it's not being used. And, you know, there's a level of practical about them. You can pull them behind your truck down the road. Uh, they're light enough where you can move them around your yard. Yep. And they're, and they're productive. You know, they're reliable. And well, it, yeah. It will probably outlive you. Exactly. If you, I mean, especially when you step up from the mall, like the other alternative to splitting wood would be manually by hand and, and yeah. a commercial big box store splitter, log splitter. Yeah. For most people, it's exactly what you would need. Yeah. I would still think though, a relatively healthy person with the right kind of wood could way out perform in speed, a hydraulic splitter. Um, you know, like, one of these I beam splitters uh, because, you know, they're just so slow Yep, and they don't come with a multi wedge. It's just, you know, it's just a single blade, I guess, uh, a yep. knife that cuts through the wood. But the practicality is you can do it forever. Yeah. All <laughs> not, day long. Not exhaust yourself. <laughs> and if there is a time where you have a log, that's just way too heavy to pick up those type splitters go, they, they can, they're like transformers. You know, they go from a horizontal splitter to a vertical one where you can leave the big heavy round of wood on the ground. Yep. Many times I've done that on the farm, Mm -hmm. tip it up vertical and start breaking them down. Yeah. I wonder what the first hydraulic splitter looked like. I wonder if it was something very similar to one of those. Because I now see all of these professional grade splitters that are out there. And I just wonder who was the first person that looked at one of those and said, there's got to be a better way. <laughs> You're right. How, how can we do this better? How, what can we improve upon? Yeah, because, man, they work. But if you are a person who uses a lot of firewood or if you are into if, you know, if you're into production for selling or if, if you have, if you have, uh, if you have an inability to stay awake, <laughs> if you, if you don't have a way to lay down and, and work the lever on that, you know, cause that's serious. That's how slow they are to me. I'll watch them on YouTube and I'll watch, I'll fast forward <laughs> or, or I, I speed up, you know, the playback time and they're still too slow. <laughs> <laughs> They definitely sometimes appear that your wood oh. would be seasoning as you split it. By the- <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> yeah, your wood would be punky by the time you're done uh, splitting it. 
Yeah, I'm. I'm good. I don't know why I'm bad mouthing. I think they're great machines, and I have right. one myself. I have one myself, and um, that is. And the reason I have, well, it was the first one I bought, and it's just like a natural purchase because that was the only thing I could think of when I thought of a log splitter. Was yep. one of those. What I didn't know that existed uh, was a different way of splitting uh, firewood for a homeowner, and that is a kinetic splitter. Uh, which are really slick have you seen them before i have and i've i've seen yours and i'm i've uh i haven't like when i was looking for a splitter i didn't really i always thought that the kinetic splitters looked um i don't know if I, how to properly say it. they just looked like they wouldn't be up to par you know with like yeah, splitting big wood. Huh? yeah they look kind of yep. they're smaller they got a small little push plate they got you know mm-hmm. they just they come across I agree. as first impressions. Mickey Mouse. Yeah. I keep using the word Mickey Mouse. When I first yeah. saw one, I thought it was Mickey Mouse and I didn't know I couldn't understand what the heck was going on. <laughs> right. And then I used and then I used one. And the first thing that went through my mind was how can I sell my old hydraulic splitter? Because <laughs> <laughs> the kinetic splitters are just fascinating machines. So the way a kin- like a hydraulic splitter works with a hydraulic pump and high pressure um, lines and it forces the ram out and then it brings it back in yep a, a kinetic splitter you use a, a motor and it could be gas or electric it spins these two big heavy flywheels which makes you know a lot of inertia and yep. there's a rack a rack and pinion gear uh, the, the the pinion gear is between the two flywheels and the rack is your ram. And when you pull up the lever, it shoots that ram out and it and it pushes the wood through a knife. Where a hydraulic splitter, like what we were describing earlier, has a cycle time of like 15 seconds. A kinetic splitter has a cycle time of two seconds. Right. Very quick. Yeah. And let me tell you, you know, in... In the whole scheme of the universe, a difference of 13 seconds doesn't sound like a lot, but it is <laughs> when you're splitting firewood. Times 10,000. <laughs> yes. I'm here to tell you the kinetic splitter um, at that level versus a big box I-beam splitter is 10 times more productive. Yep. Uh, yeah. You could be inside taking a nap uh, by the time you're halfway done with the other splitter. That's how fast they are. And have fascinating you, machines. But have you found any limitations as far as how big of wood or type of wood or anything like that? Yeah. So I think, and you would probably agree that there's no perfect machine out there, right? Every right. machine, no matter what it is, if it's a truck or a shovel or a, uh, a an oven, you know, it's got things that it's really good at and some things that it's not really good at. And the, the knock on kinetic splitters is they struggle on tough logs where, and I mean like, you know, a big branch or a crotch Knotty, yep, or a knot. Yeah. Big knots or tough wood like elm or hickory or, or gum. Uh, now I will debate people on that because I've witnessed it with my own eyes, but you know, the knock is Okay. Uh, there are some things that it's going to struggle to split where a hydraulic splitter has the grunt and the power to power through it. And that's been one of the annoyances that I have developed over the years. When people badmouth a kinetic splitter because of that, and like that would be the reason why they wouldn't purchase it, ah, that just annoys yeah. me because I'm thinking you're going <laughs> to, you're going to, you know, cut your productivity tenfold just so that you could split a log that you might come across once every week. Exactly. You know? That's where you start looking at, if you look at the downside and you say, okay, well, it can't handle the big snarly crotch of, of, of a log. But then mm-hmm. you don't look at the fact that you may only come across a piece like that every hundred pieces or every, yeah. you know, if and, if, and if that's all that you are dealing with are pieces of wood like that, then you probably wouldn't be looking at a kinetic splitter anyway. You know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's interesting though. When you, when people look at something, 
they focus on a negative and then that becomes yeah. the underlying uh you know feature that persuades them elsewhere <laughs> yeah and, and i just I, I just think that is just the entirely wrong way to assess the situation you know okay so what it won't split this log over here <laughs> but look at this gigantic pile behind me that it did you know yep <laughs> And then yeah. just think about where I would be if I limited my choice to a splitter that can split everything. And look how look how slow it is, you know. So that 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 argument annoys me. And my point is too, okay, my kinetic splitter won't split that log over there. Okay, I'm gonna throw that log uh into the pile because I'm just not even gonna mess with it. Right. <laughs> you know, not even gonna and, deal with it. Yeah, so I just don't deal with it. And life goes on. And now I got you know, I'm 20 logs ahead of where I would be if I, you know, was splitting regular logs with a hydraulic splitter. It that's I don't a, know. Yeah. That's a tough uh a tough uh mindset to get into. And I will admit that I used to be that way. Mm -hmm. I used to look at every piece of firewood and think, I have to utilize this piece of firewood. I can't throw it away. Yeah. And and, and now I'm to the point where I'm like you, oh, that big gnarly piece, uh, just throw it in the ditch. <laughs> just yeah, get rid just of don't it. even mess with it. Yeah, yeah. don't even don't even <laughs> waste the time. <laughs> I'll go wait till nighttime and I'll go throw it in the neighbor's yard. <laughs> <laughs> there are other limitations that I have experienced. Now, some people may not care about this, but I do. I don't I don't think kinetic splitters work good in foul weather, raining or snowing. I think they are only they're fair weathered splitters. And that's because they got they have a series of bearings uh, that the ram has to use uh, because it's just the way the ram works versus a hydraulic one because it's coming out so fast. So they put bearings on it and wet weather and especially cold weather because you know how like there's snow if you pick it up then that snow where your hand was kind of turns watery. Yep. You know, whenever there's like pressure, it turns the little bit of water and then that water gets its way into the bearings yeah. and those bearings freeze up and then they get flat spots and then you got to replace them. Yep. Yeah. So I don't use, whenever there's foul weather, I don't use my super splitter. My, I, mean, uh, I, I, I called it a super splitter. That's the brand guys, but I don't use my kinetic splitter. My, my log splitter has the same limitations for the foul weather, but it's in the form of the operator. <laughs> I, I don't i if the weather is bad raining snowing too cold i just don't split simple as yeah, that and that's and that's where a hydraulic splitter has an advantage because they yep. will work in any weather yes you know it doesn't it doesn't matter if it gets frozen up it's just going to just blast all that ice off because yep. it's that it's that powerful yeah but so there are hydraulic splitters out there and that's where uh, that's where I was wondering, what what happened along the way when someone is just sitting there and looking at that hydraulic splitter on an I beam, and they think there's got to be a better way, yeah, <laughs> and, and something more productive, something more powerful with multiple knives and a log lift, yep. and someone hit the poof button <laughs> i think and i think there's i think there's like the road you know split in two and you had how can we make this more productive as far as speed or how do we take and make it more powerful for dealing with bigger wood knotty wood you know anything and, at all if you want to split anything more knives. there's more mm -hmm. power or more speed because that's the those are the trade-offs right now that i see with uh -huh. modern day splitters is you either want speed or power. Well, and that's where I think what got created and started a new market was the commercial grade log splitter. Yes. The, the hydraulic commercial grade log splitter. So now you have really two different camps, two different styles. You have the homeowners version and you have a commercial grade. Yes. You know, obviously the commercial grade is more expensive. Yes, but they are. <laughs> it's it's also built a little bit differently. And you have one, don't you? A commercial grade splitter? Yes, I do. And what led me to my decision to purchase it was I looked at 
the amount of wood that I was burning and the amount of wood that my parents were burning. And I thought if I'm going to be able to split that much wood each year, I want to be as efficient as I can and not be running an old slow splitter, you know, over and over and over and over. It's just, so yeah. I looked at it as not even, not even bef before I even got interested in selling firewood, it was all just a matter of the volume of wood that was being consumed by both my parents and myself. If I could take this splitter down to the farm for a weekend, we'd have more wood made than we would in a month with the old splitter we had. Yeah. What do you, can you give us a list, a bullet point list of the differences between a commercial grade hydraulic splitter and a I-beam homeowner's <laughs> style? Uh, well, the first big one would be the log lift feature. A hydraulically controlled, uh, basically arm little table that will lift your log up into place where you don't have to bend over and do it yourself. And that's and, huge. Yeah. And the other big difference is that the ram of the splitter has a push plate that pushes the wood through a knife. And mm -hmm. that knife can either be a single wedge, a four way, a six way. Uh, I think there's also a 12 way that uh, Wolf Ridge makes. So, and then, and then just the power, the power and the speed. That's another big uh -huh. difference. I mean, so the, the cycle time, the time it takes for the Ram to go all the way out and come all the way back in. Yep. Is faster. I, on a I, commercial I, grade splitter. Yeah. Mine, I believe is around eight seconds. Uh huh. But I'm the, and if you are making, if you're making eight pieces of wood on an eight second cycle, that's pretty good. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, one push out good. and you could have, yeah, you have six pieces out of one where the old way you would be doing six cycles to get. Oh. Six. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, 15 seconds, that's what? Three minutes. Yeah. On yeah. one piece of wood. Yeah. To six. I don't know. And you would have had to pick it up yourself or you'd have yes. to buddy lift it with your neighbor. Yes. And th that's another thing um, that some uh, homeowner models have where they have a little tray off to the side, like a little log uh -huh. table to hold um, pieces that you can then resplit. Um, and a lot of the commercial grades have a, a log table on the end that will catch. Like if you run a round through a four way, it'll catch all four of those pieces and then you can take mm -hmm. those resplit them. Or throw them in a throw them in a trailer, throw them in your truck. You don't. They're not just falling sure. on the ground. And they're at a height that such. If you are into production, if you are making a lot of firewood, you would have a conveyor where the mouth of it would be underneath the outfeed of your splitter. Yes. So what gets split goes into the conveyor, and then it takes it far away from you. Right. Or you could yeah. just. What I've done is I just keep backing this, moving the splitter, so I. Split a bunch, it builds up in the front of it. I move the splitter back, it builds up some more. I move, yeah, I just keep moving it back. And mm -hmm. now, some of these, I would imagine, they're made with heavier steel. They're bigger, and they're probably a little bit more of a challenge to move around by hand versus a homeowner's model. Oh so yes, you, they are. <laughs> so you probably lose some practicality because yeah. I know that there are some splitters out there, like the one I have. It weighs as much as a you know, it's like 2,000 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> and there's I, no moving that by hand. I, I found that out as well the hard way where uh, my soil, one day I was splitting and I went to move it and I could not move the splitter. Even with my lawnmower mm -hmm. hooked up to it, could not move it. It sunk in the ground and... Oh, wow. Yeah. But yeah. Oh. What about your your uh, commercial grade splitter that yeah. you have? Well, in the world of hydraulic splitters there are horizontal ones which is pretty much what we've been talking about now and there are vertical ones there are two that i know of making vertical there's power split and then there's easton made so i have an easton made and it is called an axis and it is it works with a foot pedal it's a vertical splitter it has a log lift 
and a production table and you know that you pick the log up on the right side of the machine you slide the log down under the knife it's got a single blade knife on the ram and your foot pedal activates it and you can spin the log and control where you want it split and once it's all split you slide it to the other side of the table into the conveyor yeah and it's a lot of fun to run too and that 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 is one thing quick to mention with the commercial grade splitters generally you don't have the option to switch between vertical or horizontal like you no, do with the they're just too big and heavy yep well you don't need to though with a log lift no you know exactly so mm-hmm. yeah you don't need to to change it and that's where i think the homeowner models are so practical and it makes so much sense for a lot of people and i think anyone that wants to make firewood and they don't feel like hand splitting i think they make a lot of sense yep you know but the limitations is they're so slow <laughs> and <laughs> when you get into the commercial ones though the commercial ones are usually bigger and you don't move them around to where the wood is you bring the wood to the splitter and the price um, tag is bigger as well <laughs> yeah it's a lot yeah especially in firewood you know when you think about why did, <laughs> well i can speak from my experience i got into firewood because i'm cheap and i you know i don't like spending money so it was tough to spend money on my first splitter you know that i got it's a troy built 27 <laughs> ton i hated spending money on that because you think well what the heck i could have heated my house for a year in gas yeah. you know from what i'm spending on this log splitter and then you look at a commercial <laughs> grade splitter that's you know six times more <laughs> oh. you know so, or at at a minimum probably you know because they're, they're they get pretty pricey yes they do but for the production and the longevity you know that you can't beat them yeah they're, they last forever i look at it this way dan i uh okay i i lend i have friends and if they come up and they say hey joe can i borrow your chainsaw i'll say yeah you know when uh I, if someone were to ask to borrow my super splitter, my kinetic splitter, I would say no, I wouldn't lend it out because in the wrong hands, you can wreck it and, and, and yep. break it. Uh, it would be like a Ferrari, you know, great car, but would you lend it out to anyone? Because, <laughs> you know, you, could, you can wreck it. And even though it's a big piece of machinery, you know, like a log splitter, uh, the super splitter, I don't know. I wouldn't lend it out. The axis, even though I can't lend it out because it doesn't move, uh, that thing's indestructible. You know, I'd, I'd lend it out to the dumbest person because they couldn't hurt it. <laughs> That's how well you, built it is. But wouldn't you still be a little <laughs> nervous? I mean, I would, I always look at it, If somebody asked me that, I would offer to go split wood for them. I would not let them just take my splitter and split. Because I'd just be nervous. <laughs> I, yeah. I, you know. That's the way you've I never am. lent out your you've never lent out your wolf ridge splitter. I uh, know, but I've gone and helped someone split wood and I, you know, really took interesting. It, yeah, I, I would I would be very uh, I, I couldn't see the scenario where I would let someone hook that up, take it without me being with it. <laughs> and and why is that? Because you're afraid of them breaking the machine or getting hurt themselves. Uh, but the machine, I don't care about them. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be more more worried about my splitter. <laughs> Serious? I I'm just sitting here in the comfort of Woodhound Studio, and I'm looking at you, and I'm saying, "There's no way you could damage that log splitter." Oh, but there is. The, you, I mean, there is. Well, I mean, you just don't know. That's you know. I guess I look uh -huh. at the big unknown factor always, and I'm just like, "What if something did happen?" Or I get it uh -huh. back and now I notice something that isn't quite running what right. I'm like, how do you that, you know, it's, I, yeah. I mean, I'm, that's the kind of person I am though. I'm kind of worried. I, sometimes I worry about stuff like that. I wouldn't, yeah, yeah it's you know, wrong with being a worry work. Yeah. Cause like I said, you get yeah. it back and all of a sudden two weeks later, you notice now the valve isn't or the handles kind of bent or, you know, you just little yeah. things that. Sure. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm with you. Yeah, I can see. I will, I'll say this, you know, if we're talking about lending stuff out, uh, uh, you know, I used, this just used to be a, you know, a hobby. I would just do firewood, you know, to heat my house when it became a profession and yeah. I have tools that I have bought and that's not just, I uh, like my dump trailer. 
it's not just a dump trailer to me anymore. It's my livelihood, you know? Exactly. And and I, I look at it differently now and I treat it differently and I would I wouldn't lend it out to someone. Yeah. I've lent it out to my nephew, but it's a very short list. You know, <laughs> because you know, if something happens to that I'm I'm hurt. Right. You know? You're out of business. You that's you <laughs> yeah. need it to function. I need it. Yeah. Yes. So I noticed, you know, now with my chainsaws and you know the splitters and stuff uh, i'm a yeah. little bit different now oh, it's yeah. changed me <laughs> i'm a changed man oh <laughs> i'm the same <laughs> way with my saw my saw would not I, I mean people always ask to run it and i kind of let people here and there but i always am nervous yeah the only time i've ever lent my saws out is i also gave them the my uh my can of of mix you know, my, I have a gas can <laughs> that I just use only for my chainsaws. It's got my 50 to one mix in it. It's got the oil that I want put in it. And I tell them there's no other gas can allowed, you know, uh, yeah. 50 feet around this chainsaw. <laughs> and so just use this fuel to fill it back up. But that was the only time I ever lent it out. Yeah. I, I, but now I, I don't lend it out anymore. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But man, isn't it? Aren't log splitters fun? Oh, it's aren't yeah. they aren't they exciting? Yeah, and it's I, awesome. I understand and I appreciate the sense of accomplishment you get when you use an axe or a maul and you split a whole bunch of wood and it's laying there and you can look at it and you can say, I put in this work and this is what I accomplished. But running a log splitter like what I have, the Wolf Ridge, or I'm sure with you with the axis, yeah, it's the same thing. I just oh. it's you can't really describe it's, it's like time stands still. <laughs> it does it is just so, uh, that uh pedal that i gotta push on for my foot you know to make it work it has just the satisfying clunk to it it's hard to explain <laughs> you know yeah. and i would imagine like the levers on your on your wolf ridge probably yeah. have that same feel to them as well oh and it's yeah the 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 sounds and the noises that it makes and oh yep. so much fun yeah i love splitting firewood it is even though you know the engines are loud too you can still hear and feel the wood splitting it's so the, cool the cracking and the crunching and the breaking of the fibers and oh it's just yeah it's, it's yes. so it's so satisfying oh it is <laughs> now i feel like there, going outside and splitting firewood <laughs> probably listening to this saying what have i stumbled upon yeah, these few uh -huh. kooks talking about the sounds and the satisfaction of splitting firewood <laughs> well i'll tell them what they've stumbled upon but they've if stumbled it's but, upon you the... know if if it's in your blood and once it gets in your blood firewood is just intoxicating it is so oh, amazing it uh is. The experiences you can have and and mm -hmm. running running yeah. a commercial grade log splitter is one of those experiences that yeah it is it's it's uh, i if 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 our listener i'm talking to you listener and i'm looking right at you here if you've never got a chance to run one you know you always get a shot at one of these trade shows they you know the the manufacturers will let you run them get get in get get in there and check them out they're that much fun. <laughs> or if you've ever wanted to see some, I will tell you there's something coming up this summer that I don't know if you're aware of this, Joe, but there's a thing called the Midwest Firewood Frenzy. Oh, wow. And it is held in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And the Wolf at Wolf Ridge Manufacturing. And if you want any details, you can go over to back40firewood.com and you can get your details. I'm coming to an event. Well, that sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. Oh, it's, it's amazing. It's our second year mm -hmm. doing it. Um, we have, you know, log splitters, processors, and a whole bunch of fun people to hang out with. <laughs> wow. Will you be there? I will be there. Yes. Okay. That might detour well, that some would people. be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, man. I think any chance to get to meet you would be a blast. But not to sidetrack the, the conversation here. I just want to throw that out there because yeah. the firewood frenzy is coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, have we talked about everything that we can think of for well, splitting firewood? I mean, there's other thing. There's those cones. You ever see those cones? As They're like a big yeah. screw. Yep. And they, they, they break apart uh, a log like that. 
I've yeah. heard people use gunpowder to, to <laughs> split wood. <laughs> I, I think if if you're at the point of having to blow apart your firewood, you should probably find <laughs> you're another either bored, <laughs> You're either bored or desperate, one or yes. the other, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I don't yeah know. but the important I, thing is to split it, though. You want right, to split your right. firewood. Get it, it helps it dry out better, keeps it from rotting away. Yep. And and whether you're, you know, if, if you're getting into firewood and you're thinking what, you're not sure what direction you want to go, I would say to look at, you know, what I did is I looked at the amount of wood I wanted to split and how much time I wanted to spend splitting that wood. Yeah. And that, Well, price plays a big, plays yep. a big role, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if anyone were to ask me, like a homeowner that wants to get a log splitter and you know not a not a mole, uh, I would tell them to get a kinetic splitter. They're yep. twice as much as a big box store, but they're ten times more productive, and it's absolutely worth it. Yep. And there's a bunch of different brands out there. Yeah, but that that's my recommendation. I, I um, everything serves a purpose, but you know for the little bit extra that you're going to spend it's 10 times 10 times more productive yep i would i would tell yeah. any homeowner depending on how far away you live from me just buy my firewood or get yourself your own splitter <laughs> 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 it's funny though as much labor that goes into firewood it's amazing it's not worth more huh oh that's another discussion we need to have let me yeah, tell you Let's add that to the list. Why is oh. firewood so cheap? What is yeah. going on with some people out there? I don't know. I'm. It's crazy. Everything mm -hmm. else seems to be going up as far as energy, costs of everything. And yet, when I look around, firewood keeps getting cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, wake that enough, about, enough about that. For, we'll save yeah. that for another, be another Add that to the list. We'll bring that up next yes. time. Yes. All right. Okay, Dan, uh, is there anything else about splitters that you can think of that we haven't talked about yet? Um, at the moment, no, but something will probably come up for another episode. <laughs> all right. Well, I want to thank all of the listeners for checking in, downloading our podcast. And if you get a chance, maybe send us an email. Dan, don't we have an email address now? We actually also have a website you can go to, thewoodhounds.com, where... On there, you can listen to the latest episode, listen to previous episodes, and yes, email us and get in touch. Yeah, we would love to hear from you and give us uh, give us your comments and let us know how we're doing and if there's other topics out there that you would like to hear about. We would certainly entertain any good advice. Yes, indeed. So All the right. woodhounds.com. Check it okay. out. Okay, Wood, woodhounds.com. I think I'll get on that here as soon as we hang up. All right. Well, Dan, it was nice hanging out with you today and I um, want to thank all of our uh, people out there listening to us. Yeah. Great seeing you again as usual and all good right. conversation. Can't wait for the next yeah. time we get together. All right. Well, from Woodhound Studio, I'd like to say thank you to everyone for tuning in, listening to our podcast. And Dan, maybe it's time we say goodbye. Yep. I think that'll do it for this week. Everyone, uh, Thanks for tuning in, and we hope to see you back here next week. And until then, everyone have a great day.